you after a word like that. Okay, come on. We got 10 minutes, and you saw what she did in 10 minutes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I just pray that God will do the same. Amen. 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 My sister called me and she told she said, um, what shoes are you wearing? Come on. So I thought that was gonna be a good thing for me because I love shoes. Mm -hmm. I wear all kinds of shoes. I just I, you can't have enough of them. Amen. 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 With you. So well, her choices that was left was ballet slippers or something else that she had and I didn't know a thing about those uh, about as much as I know about these. Amen. So I had to go to um the book about ballet slippers. Uh -huh. These are beautiful shoes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on Amen. But in order to wear these shoes, you have to know the dance. You have to learn the art of ballet. And so before I go further, I just want to thank and praise God for his spirit in this place and the man and woman that reside over this house. I thank my sister for inviting us out and then I look around and see all the powerhouses. Yes. The people that I know that God has stuff shut up in their bones. Amen. Amen. I thank God and I'm honored to be in the presence of people such as yourself. Amen. These ballet slippers, they look pretty. Uh -huh. And when people wear them, they look like they have it all together. Amen. Amen. As I was reading about these ballet slippers, uh -huh. I learned that they're hard work. You can't just put these on and think you're going to dance. Amen? You can't just put them on and think you're going to look graceful. Well, I'll tell you what. The Word of God, the ministry, the body is just like these ballet slippers. You can't just slip in it and think everything is all right. Amen? You can't just step in it and think you're going to look graceful. You can't just get up and perform. Amen? Because it's more than just that. When you stand before God and when you're in these slippers, you got to know what you're doing. Now these ballet slippers, in order to wear them, you have to learn how to stand on your toes. Amen? Well, when you're standing up for God, guess what? You on your toes. They make these shoes square at the end, so when you stand on your toes, it will balance your body. Your body's weight will be balanced. Amen? How many balanced Christian soldiers do we have in the house? Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, God showed me something when I was reading about these ballet slippers and with the scripture that my sister gave me. It came from Exodus 32, 6. And what I'm going to need somebody to do, sometimes I get long-winded, so when, when it gets too long, when I'm down to eight, do like this to me. Amen? So I, I can wrap it up. I, I want to obey what the house says. Yeah, Exodus 2, 6 says, And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt, burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. Uh -huh. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. Well, when you're reading that, that sounds great. But then when you get the background on it, Come it's on. not as great as it sounds. And I say this to say, said that to say this. Sometimes people can stand before you in their ballet slippers uh -huh. and give you a word. And if you don't know what that word is or what it entails, uh -huh. then you will do some things that isn't what God has instructed you to do. Uh -huh. Amen? Amen? So you have to study to show yourself approved. So what I say to you today, I don't want you to take my word, I want you to go to the book. So you write those scriptures down. So let me give you a little background on what actually was happening. Well, these people, Moses had brought them out of Egypt. Amen? He had brought them through the wilderness. God had did all kind of great things for these ungrateful people. He had brought them out of bondage and captured, he allowed them to be free. He brought them to the Red Sea and to show them how good, powerful, merciful he was, he parted that sea and allowed them to come through. Come then he allowed the enemy to be stopped. Mm -hmm. So he parted the sea on one end and closed it on the other. Oh, That's yeah. the kind of God we serve. Yeah. But still, we waver in our faith, amen? Yeah. So they wavered. Well, at this point, what had happened was Moses had went on the mountaintop. Yeah. And sometimes when our man and woman of God 
leaves us for a bit to be with ourselves, we get antsy. We don't know what to do like we crazy. We don't know what to do. We're going to do what we said. No, we are instructed to do a certain thing. Yes. Well, Moses went up and he left word for Aaron that was over that house to tell the people he was going to preach and be with the people and tell them what to do. Well, Aaron got so caught up in what the people was doing that he forgot what his ministry was. Amen. So I'm telling don't get caught up in what everybody else around you is doing. When God has given you a specific thing to do, do what God told you to do. Don't get caught up in what you think somebody else is doing because it look good to you. Amen? Look good, get a lot of people in trouble. Amen? Hallelujah. So we need to remember what God told us, what our instructions is. I have four points, and I'm going to do them real quick. Point one. Don't leave the people to themselves too long. Right. Amen. When Moses, when the, when the people saw that Moses went on the mount, they didn't see him for 40 days. It only took 40 days for people to cut up. Right. Amen. He ain't coming back. We don't know what's going on with him. 40 days. And there's something about that number 40 that get me, you know, I, I look at 40 is the number of testing. That's when you're tested. You know, everybody talk about this 30 day one. The Bible's 40 days. 40 days, Jesus was tempted, on, amen. 40, 40 days, it took Moses, to, to, he fasted 40 days. We fast for five and we think we're going to die, Come amen. On, 40 on, days is, is your testing period, amen. God's speaking to somebody. I don't know who it is. I don't know what for, but you know. And I tell you what, 40 days, they uh, it took them 40 years in that wilderness to get where they needed to be, amen. 40. So it's something about that number 40. Y'all go back and think about it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So what um, what happened at this point? They said, Aaron, the man in charge, uh -huh. make us a God. Right. We need something to serve. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, he didn't, and they didn't say one God. They said gods. Uh -huh. Amen. How many gods do we serve? Uh -huh. Amen. Do we serve our jewelry? Do we serve our cars? Do we serve our houses? What God are we serving? What are we putting before our God? Amen. What are we putting before our Lord and Savior? Okay. Get your ballet slippers on so you can be balanced. Hallelujah. It's a hard thing. And I'm telling you, when you try to walk in those shoes, you're going to get bruised. You're going to get hurt. You're going to get pain. You're going to have... Sometimes you might even get breaks. But that's why you have to prepare yourself for what God is told you to do. Amen. And nobody can do what God called you to do but you. Don't try to give your gift away. Do what God told you to do. Don't try to walk in somebody else's shoes. Walk in your gift. Amen. Hallelujah. So, when the people, when Moses went up, the people got antsy. Aaron, the man that was in charge, he saw that it was so good. They were happy. They were referenced in, in everything. And so he, it got good to him. After he made this calf, he made an altar for the calf. And so the people were dancing, and God saw this. And he said, Moses, go back down there. Those people are going crazy. And the Lord said to Moses, quick. Go down the mountain. Your people whom you brought from the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. How quickly they have turned away from the way I commanded them to live. Yeah, how quickly have we turned away from the way that God has commanded us to live. I had a whole different word. I was talking to my brother over here, and we were talking about how our, 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 our world, our city, our nation has just taken on yes. to a lifestyle. They're saying that alternative life is okay. But the word of God says it's an abomination. Amen. I'm sorry if that hurts somebody, but the word is the word. Amen. We, we have conformed to the world to, know it, but to say it is okay. I may not appreciate a light or accept your sin. I love you, but I hate the sin. I have to stand with God on that. You can't stand in the church, church and say that you represent God and then you're living an ulterior life. Amen. What shoes are you wearing? Amen. Are you going to be balanced? Are you going to put on your flip-flops? 
or are you going to have something solid? When God tells you to do something, church, do it. You might be saving my life. Amen. And if you don't love nobody else, I love me. Amen. And if I need you to make it over that next time, put on your shoes so we can do it together. And do it. Now I know I, I, I'm not even going to go over no more points because I'm looking. But the conclusion is, if you have on the wrong shoe huh. Come on. if you have on the wrong shoe and they're not properly fitted my sister said earlier when you go and you got the shoes and you walk it you're going to be hurt. It hurts you. You will be in pain. You can't think. You Come do on. things that you're not supposed to do. You do things that you don't want to do. Having wrong or ill-fitted Ill Ill shoes is just like having a toothache. You can't even think, amen? amen? So when you have on shoes that are not for you, meaning if you're in somebody else's lane, it's not going to feel comfortable. If you're doing something that God hasn't told you to do, you're not going to feel right about it. It's something in your spirit. When you have the spirit of the living God inside of you, you can't continue to be wrong and be okay with it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So when you have on shoes that are ill-fitted, think about taking them off, taking a look back, see what God wants you to do, yeah. see what God has called you to do. There's something he wants you to do. Don't worry about how it looks to anybody else. Don't nobody have to walk that but you. Don't nobody have to stand before God for you but you. Listen to what he says. Put on the shoe that God has fitted, fashioned for you. Amen. Amen. Come on, you got to 